Hi everyone, I'm super excited to have Dr. Tamika Zor on today's Egg Whisper show for a fertility Q&A with an expert. So Tamika is going to come on today and she's going to talk to us about something that's really important and the topic is how race impacts black women in medicine, their fertility, and what Tamika Zor is doing about it. So I'm going to bring her on right now. She's going to come on here in a second. I can feel it. Here she is. Hi, Hi Tamika. Thank you for being here today. Yes, thank I'm you for so having happy. me. Me too. Awesome. Thank you. Well, for my audience who doesn't know you, I'm sure your audience does, tell us about yourself. Where do you practice? Where can patients find you? Yes. Yeah. I'm, my name's Tamika Zori. I am a fertility doctor at, right now. I'm in Southern California, um, but I am uh, very happily, excitingly moving up to the Bay Area in a couple months. And I'm going to be starting at Spring Fertility um, in like August, September. So very excited about that. Oh, I'm excited to have you in the Bay yes, Area too. I can't wait. And you have to apologize that I pronounced your last name. Oh, well, no. It's imagine. Okay. I'm used to it. So it's Zori. No. Yep. That's a beautiful yep. last name. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So let's talk. And I'm so excited to have you on as a guest today. Um, how have the events of the past few weeks affected you? Yeah. Um, I feel like the past couple of weeks have been rough they're they're very emotional um i think they're made more emotional because i have a son now um he's one years old and um just turned one and just kind of thinking about him in that situation or you know if this country is still where it is in 10 15 or 20 years like what kind of conversations i have to have with my child um and so it's been it's been a lot it's been emotional and definitely even with my husband um he's a white male and so it's been we've had a lot of conversations even before kids and it's been even more since all this has happened. Right. And then tell me about your background, your education and your athletic accomplishments. There's so many. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was, um, pretty much born in Louisiana, but raised in Indiana. Um, I did, um, I was very big in the track and cross country in high school, middle school, high school. Um, and I ended up getting a scholarship to the university of Texas to run mm -hmm. track. Um, I specialized in the 800 and the four by 400. Um, so that was a very big part of my life for, you know, most of my life growing up. And from there, I surprisingly somehow managed to get a full scholarship to medical school at IU, Indiana University. Um, so that was amazing. Um, it saved us a lot of money. <laughs> um, and then that's why my husband was in medical school. We met first year of med school. Um, and then we got married in our second year of residency. Um, and I guess kind of more about me is that I am an OBGYN by training, board certified in that. Um, I did my residency in Indiana at St. Vincent and then went out to, came out to California for my fellowship at UCLA. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's been great here. We love being in California right, right. now. So, right. And then what led you to the field of OBGYN and more specifically fertility? Yeah. Um, with OB, I, it was luckily one of my first rotations and, once I started, I like I knew um, I was one of those people where I tried to keep a, a super open mind and no other rotation could really match my experience with OB. Um, I just love the women's health aspect of it, um, being able to really have the mix of surgery and clinical um, and to like really follow a woman through her journey um, mm -hmm. of just, you know, from adolescence up to um, adulthood. Um, and so that really kind of drew me to the field. And then in my second year of residency um, was when we got exposure to fertility in our program. And I think just seeing that mix of patients, the science was, you know, it's still very cutting edge and it's just, it's challenging. It will mentally challenge you. Um, it's just, it's a fun field. I love the patients. I love what we get to do. It still has a good mix of like clinical and education um, and then procedures that are nice and quick and you can kind of go back and forth throughout your day mm -hmm. to doing all that. And so it's, it's a really good field. Yeah. And I imagine with your background, especially as an athlete, yes, you have your eye on the prize. You have a goal. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> that is definitely, that definitely helps. So how has race affected you both as a child and in your medical career? Yeah. Um, it, I, I feel like it's, it's a conversation I've been having a lot with even friends now. Um, how, you know, they always say, you know, their kids don't realize that they don't recognize it. And I kind of shared my experience even on Instagram of my first experience with racism was at age five. And so while we really hope that kids don't know this, um, they do. And, you know, they're, they're getting it from somewhere because I feel like we are born very pure to love 
and learn to hate. Um, but I was, I was five and I was with this girl and we were, I think, fighting over a toy or something very silly. And we were kind of going back and forth talking. And then she ended with, well, at least I'm not black. And I mean, as a five-year-old, I like just didn't know where to go with that. Like I just, I literally like clammed up. I was just like shocked, obviously went home, was crying to my mom who was then crying to me right. about like having to talk about this at the age of five and just that, you know, this is something you might hear throughout your life and it's, it's not fair, but that's what it is. And you, and I think right there was like, you, you always have to try and do better. You're, you're going to have to kind of prove yourself in life um, to, to get where you want to get. Um, and so that was instilled at me at a very young age. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that also plays a big factor into my drive to just want to succeed. Mm -hmm. And what about during your medical school career? Did you, did you face some of those same types of issues? I feel like not as blatantly in medicine. Um, I know definitely probably not in medical school. And that was probably more, if anything, gender, where people just confuse women for nurses. Um, I, I get asked mm -hmm. if I'm a nurse a lot. And I don't really know if it's necessarily about race. It's probably more gender and just mm -hmm. kind of getting rid of those stereotypes um, of what a doctor and who a doctor is. Um, I know even coming through college when I knew I wanted to be pre-med and I've I've known I wanted to go into the medical field and be a doctor actually since I was probably 13 or 14. Um, but I was always trying to be talked into something else going into college even. It was, you know, by their counselors or whoever, um, you know, oh, you can go to nursing, you can go to be a physician's assistant, you can be a chiropractor, like, do you really want to do this? And it, you know, it made me question myself, but I, you know, that was not what I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to be a doctor and this is what my drive and my goal was. Um, Right. And so that's just, it's, I feel like I'm always trying to prove myself and to anyone in any situation. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. just something I feel like I personally carry and maybe I don't need to, but it's just mm -hmm. kind of how I, I feel like I, I am now. And what kind of advice does your mom have for you now when you share stuff with her? Like if you were to say, mom, someone confused me as a nurse or something, what are some mom quotes? I feel like from your mom. I feel like now it's just like, oh, well, you know, who's, who's the patient? And a lot of times, when, yeah. you know, it, it happens sometimes it's older men who right. that's what they kind of grew up. That's the situation they grew up in. And right. so I, I don't take that as personally anymore. And I think being a doctor, um, I, I am a very sensitive person by nature. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. but you do have to kind of toughen up in this field, you yeah. know, with medical school and residency and just everything in general, I think you have to kind of develop a thicker skin, um, Otherwise, it's, it's going to be a, it's a rough road. Um, yeah, but I part. try not to take certain things so personally. Um, mm -hmm. Race is definitely still a, a sensitive, I'd say, subject. But mm -hmm. in terms of mistaking me for whoever else, um, I just yeah. try to politely correct them. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll always ask if I'm old enough to be a doctor, and I'll just thank them <laughs> for the compliment. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, someone said I looked a lot younger than <laughs> I did on my Instagram. And I'm like, oh, in person, they're like, you look a lot younger. And I'm like... Cool. I'll take I it. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, I mean, obviously there's a lack of diversity in medicine. Mm -hmm. What yeah. kinds of things do you think that we can do as a community of physicians to improve that? I think just opening up a possibility for a lot of people. Um, I know, I mean, personally, I, I feel like I grew up in a very middle-class family. My, my parents still are in like accounting, auditing. Um, they're not in the medical field. I wasn't really around doctors um, necessarily, but I think just increasing exposure for people. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've always shared and I'm always happy to, you know, talk to anyone who's even considering medicine or OB or a fellowship. Um, I'm happy to share my journey and how I got here and what people can do to come and go along that path. I think having role models is so important. Mm -hmm. And I think having role models who are men, women, gay, straight, black, white, Hispanic, you know, every Asian, every race and ethnicity, I think it's just important to have a diversity of people that you can really kind of try to emulate. You know, I, there are people who I want to be regardless of race even, but just who I like mm -hmm. look up to. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's important just to have a variety of people and backgrounds. Right, right. So I want to take, talk a little about infertility right now and how mm -hmm. it affects black women. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I feel like definitely this topic's been um, talked about more, especially in social media. Um, black women and infertility, it's a kind of a touchy subject. Um, a lot of black women don't even want to talk about infertility. Um, they, It's like a shame and it's a stigma associated mm -hmm. with being black and having infertility. Um, I think there are a lot of reasons for that. I think, you know, there've been papers written there definitely points of views about um, 
stereotypes of black women being hyper fertile, I think maybe even going back to like slavery days, um, and then that you're maybe like less of a woman if you can't get pregnant on your own or have to seek out treatment. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why in terms of us just accessing care is an issue. Um, but in terms of just numbers wise, um, black women, they have almost a two times higher rate of infertility than white women. Um, reasons for that can be varied in terms of either access to care and that they're not seeking care as quickly. Um, mm -hmm. They have a higher risk of uterine disease in terms of fibroids, as well as tuber fa tubal factor infertility. Um, so all of those could potentially be going into why um, we see this kind of discrimination of black women having a higher rate of infertility than white women. And why do you think that they're less likely to seek access? I mean, if, if we know that they're two and a half times higher risk of infertility, why that? I know. Um, one interesting study, it was a survey of, I think it was 50 black women. Um, and it took to just even get 50 black women to share their infertility experience took five years of collection. Um, per the author of that study. And I think that in itself says a lot in terms of just wanting to keep things in and not wanting to be public about it. Um, so I think just besides access to care, um, I think diversity of care, um, I think it does play a part in having a doctor who maybe looks like you or has been through a similar experience. Mm -hmm. um, Stanford came out with a really interesting study. It was, um, I think in 2016, but it was 1300 black men and they were all going in for preventative health screening and they were assigned to either a black male physician or a non black male physician. Mm -hmm. And there's almost a 34% higher rate of men who went to the black male doctors seeking like per completing their preventive care screening mm -hmm. than the opposite. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they looked at reasons why and trust and communication were big parts of that. And so I think a lot of those factors go into it. Um, again, on top of access to care, socioeconomic levels, having programs that are available to African-American women. Um, and even something as simple as, I had a patient once say that like, she, she had no resources for like who a black woman was who'd been through infertility. So I gave her a couple that I knew of. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, we just don't see even pictures online. Like if you go to a clinic website, it's typically not black women who you're seeing on websites. Um, and I have gone online and kind of looked at these clinics and a lot of times it's not. And so mm -hmm. even something as simple as that makes it think, makes you think, oh, this may be, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe this doesn't really right. affect me. Right. I mean, I've had patients even tell me like, I, every time I come here, there's only this one ethnicity that's here. Have you ever <laughs> taken care of someone of my ethnicity? I'm like, yeah, just wait 30 minutes, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, that's not, yeah. Got to see the next person that comes in, yeah. So as physicians, what can we do to improve access to fertility care for Black women? Yeah, I think there's a lot that we need to start with. I think just education and awareness is going to be really key in terms of letting Black women know they are not alone in this. They are not, they should not be ashamed of this. They should not have to stay silent about it. Um, you know, one good resource I like was Fertility for Color Girls. It was started mm -hmm. by um, a reverend who actually had been through her own infertility journey and realized that she felt alone and there weren't a lot of resources. So I like to refer patients to that site um, mm -hmm. just to kind of have other voices to talk to and see other people who look like them going through this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that we need to improve diversity in medical school um, and in our field specifically in REI. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I believe the latest statistic out of AAMC was that Black physicians make up about 5% of all doctors in the U.S., um, even though Black Americans, I think, are about 12 to 13% of the population. Mm -hmm. So there's still a big discrepancy just in terms of the diversity in doctors. And then Black females are even lower than that. Right, right. Yeah. So someone had a suggestion for you. They said, if you go on YouTube, there are no black women talking about it. So I do think that you need a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm scared. I like <laughs> Don't on, be like, scared. Talk yesterday or something. If, so. if I can do it, you can do it too. <laughs> thank you. I definitely will consider it. I definitely will. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, Tamika, thank you for being on with me right now. Thank you it's for such having a pleasure. me. I hope a lot of people listen me to too. you and see you as patients. Can you tell us again where people can find you, your clinic mm -hmm. website, all that kind of stuff? Yes. Um, I will be moving up and joining Spring Fertility um, starting probably August or September. 
um, springfertility.com. It's located in San Francisco. Um, they have offices in the city. Um, they also have them in Oakland and Redwood City, and I'll be based in their San Francisco office. So I am super, super excited to join them. Um, it's going to be, I think, a, a great experience. Um, they have a very diverse group of doctors there. Um, they do excellent medicine, um, mm -hmm. excellent fertility care. So I'm super thrilled to be joining them soon. I'm sure they're just as thrilled to have you as well. Thank you. You're joining a great group of doctors. There's no doubt about that. You made a thank great you. choice. Well, thank you again for being on. I hope you have you. a great night. You and too. for all of you, thank you. And for all of you that are listening, thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, Tamika. Bye, guys. Bye. See you.